I'm Morgana Starr and I'm coming to you from my home, the House of Troy. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our special children that are being born at this time and have been here on the planet for the last few years, but just a few years. So we're talking about kids that are around five years old or under. I was asking Anel how to uh, describe them because they're pure magic in my eyes. Um, and she calls them the bright ones. She said that's how the angels refer to these children. I'm sure you've heard the names, the indigo, the um, crystal children, the rainbow children, and we as the human race, we love to label things. Um, and the best way to describe these, these are the bright ones. Um, and some of you have children like this. Some of you have uh, grandkids like this. Some of you get very frustrated <laughs> with the, um, that I was going to say intelligence, but that's not quite it, but it is sometimes because these kids are smarter than us and they're old souls, they're wise souls, and some of them are new souls. So they kind of go in the same category, even the old souls are uh, in the same category coming in as bright ones for this time. And the angel's telling me that there needs to be a balance of the old souls with the new souls coming in to create a cohesive uh, environment for our future generations. So all that being said, it's so important right now, more than ever, that we become the example that we want our children, the bright ones, to follow us. Um, and you know, as, as being a parent, we don't always do a very good job. I do remember times when my kids were little and they were, they were more of the indigo variety and I was an older indigo, I would get very frustrated with them and um, um, raise my voice at them and be short-tempered. And looking back on it, I realized the times that I did that was when I was under the biggest stress. At that point, I hadn't embraced the spiritual path. I didn't know about meditation. I didn't know what, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I didn't know what I could do to make that shift and make that change. So I survived, I did the best I could. And I wanna give that to you guys as a little bit of hope. You're all doing the best you can. But let's get some tools to help these little bright ones that will be our future. And uh, help shift the reality on this planet. We need to listen to them. We need to not tell them what to think. We need to allow them to think for themselves. Give them some guidance, yes, some boundaries, yes, but don't major on the minors with them. Um, and ask them questions. Give them a chance to share their wisdom. Ask them what they think about this or that. Where did they go when they dream? Where did, where did they live before they lived here? Let their imaginations fly a little bit. Watch them carefully, especially the little ones that aren't verbal yet. Watch where their attention goes when they look up and they start chattering at the sky or, or a corner of the room or they're just focused in a certain direction. They're seeing spirits. They're connected. They don't know that you didn't see them. So let's support these bright ones by honoring who they are. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is you protect these ones. They're not at a place yet that they know how to protect themselves. So we need to teach them. Before I knew any better, as I was starting down this path, before I knew the pyramid of protection, which I really recommend for everybody that the angel brought in for us, is it was the bubble. And I would tell my grandson, who was two and a half, and his parents would follow in like-mindedness, before he'd be out or he'd feel stressed because he'd hear all these noises and it's just too, I mean, he would really would go like this. Um, 
put your bubble up, put your bubble up, breathe your bubble, and you walk them through how to do it. So it learned, he learned that more naturally how to do it. I also gave him his Reiki attunement when he was little because he was going around trying to help everyone feel better. And I knew that that was because he was an empath and he would pick up other things from people. So many of my clients' kids have gotten sick and as soon as they were able to tap into their power, even the little ones, they started to get better because the doctors didn't know what was wrong with them to start with. And it was just because of their, their empath. Um, so I'm going to, um, I had this up here. I'm going to read some of the, um, some of the questions that we had that came through on my, um, okay. So the universe didn't want me to ask those questions. I put it on my phone. <laughs> And it deleted when I was talking about the bright ones. However, I do remember a couple of the questions and I'm going to bring up what the angels reminding me of the most important questions. And one was exactly that. Um, feeling like their grandchild, uh, granddaughter had some gifts. And I immediately got a yes. Yes, she does. And these are tools that you can use to help her in that way. We have a couple people that have joined our online course simply so that they got the tools to be able to help their kids or their grandkids to empower them because they understood without knowing the terminology that their those children are bright ones. They're here to hold that energy and anchor the light into this world and to bring the balance. So we're not talking like blinding light we're talking like a balance of the two. Um, the other um, question was brought out about angels. And this particular one about the angels, uh, this gal had worked with some different angels. Um, let me see that for a second. My assistant's helping me out here. I want to find this particular question. It had to do, where'd you go? Here she is. Here's your question. So I'm not going to mention the name. You're going to know when you watch this that this was your, your question. So you started on a journey a few years ago and I'm just going to read it as her. I know there's a lot more for me to learn. I never knew that people paid so much attention to the number 1111, which is also my birthday. I know I'm supposed to work with the angels. I've worked with Archangel Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, Uriel, Ariel, Metatron, and Shamuel. Many times I also know that I'm a healer, so I work with Archangel Raphael more. But my question is, when I meditate, my whole body shakes and vibrates so strongly that it scares me. So I kind of pull back and I, am I supposed to be an actual channel for the angel spirit to communicate through? I feel I know my purpose, but I let ego get in the way and start second guessing everything about myself. So, good. Ego is actually there to protect you in this case. Ego is not a bad thing. It is there to keep you from doing something that would be dangerous. And I feel like this is a, a, your personal angel coming in to say, hey, wait a minute. We don't really know who all these angels are that you're working with. I think I've talked about this before, that a lot of our theories and a lot of our thoughts about angels, it, it comes from the Bible. And that was written for political reasons. There are hundreds and thousands of archangels and millions of angels. So Raphael was noted in the Bible as a healing angel and I used to work with him. Michael is as a protector angel in the Bible but he also committed a lot of genocide in the name of the God of that Bible. So I would invite you to look a little deeper. It sounds like you're kind of outgrowing these. Um, Dana and I talk about these as our starter angels, good place to start. And then when you start evolving, it's time to go the next step. 
if you're not fully protected and you channel an, a different angel that is not aligned with you, it can cause you a lot of problems. It's, it can be very dangerous. For you to shake, it depends on how much shaking. I mean, if you're just going like this and trembling all over, there's something not in alignment and something needs to shift. And this may be your ego saying, uh, back off, you don't know how to protect yourself fully. Um, and that's why we teach people how to do this so that they, they we don't have to pick the pieces up later um, and we can help you become your empowered best self um, I never in my life and like I said I've met I've worked with these other angels never met a more powerful protective or healing angel as Archangel Amel and she doesn't care about the Archangel She's just, you know, she just usually goes by a now. And reminder, this is not the feminine form of Haniel. This particular angel that's taking the name of a now is like the mother aspect of the divine source. And who do you want to go to when you get a boo-boo? You know, you hurt your knee and you want a band-aid and you're probably not hurt that bad, but you need some love. You, you go to mom. So this is, this is the energy that she brings up in people and um, one, one of my clients after I did some energy or did a session with her, actually I didn't really do any energy work, I just brought Anel in for her and let Anel do her thing, got a hold of me about two days afterwards and she's like, oh my gosh, my doctor doesn't know what to do, my tumor's gone and he can't operate. I didn't know she had a tumor. She just came to me because she was in pain. And not just that, her pain was gone and she slept 12 hours straight and she hadn't slept uh, good for months. So the energy of this angel, this feminine divine, is who I would recommend that you start working with. And if she wants to delegate out to other angels, she will. Um, I don't get tired when I channel her or bring her information in. I do, if I bring in other angels, I get a little more tired, but when there's been enough, she knocks them out. She says, you gotta leave now, this body's tired, go away. So for you particular, honey, get some training um, because it's time for you to spread your wings and fly. You've outgrown the ones you're working with and it's time to go to the next level. Um, another person asked, um, who, her, or when, when will I become an angel? This is really a good question. And the reason this is a good question is because there's a lot of misconceptions about angels. And people think that, um, well, my grandma died and now she's my angel. Well, really she's not. She is watching over you. You got a bonus. You have grandma watching you and uh, taking care of you, but she's not an angel. Because an angel is an interdimensional being and a, a different kind of a race of beings. The way to humans are trying to evolve to that, that's why we keep talking about ascension, raising your vibration, and it usually takes lifetimes. You, for most people, hundreds of lifetimes to get to that place. So when you speak of people even like the Buddha, um, I just heard he has a fragment of angelic energy with him and always has uh, each of the incarnations of the Buddha. So, but he's been evolved. He's considered an ascended master. He's in a place of peace and tranquility. Um, and not all angels are always in that place because sometimes angels have to battle for human rights to protect our bright ones, to take care of our future. And I'll tell you right now, some of these bright ones, they are. They're carrying that angelic energy with them. Don't put out their light, guys. It's so easy to poke holes in their little buckets of self-esteem. So we have to fill that up as fast as we can so the world can't empty it. So let me check another one. 
Um, there was another question that came through that was very significant. Here we go. Um, I've been seeing a white flicker of light every now and then. My question is, which angel could it be? What can I do to keep moving forward? Uh, and again, those are good questions. As you are awakening, you're going to get these little flashes of light out of the corner of your eyes. You may see them right straight in front of you. I remember the first time I saw the, the angel, it was like a full angel form, kind of blurry because it was so bright. It was like looking right into the most, the strongest flashlight you could imagine. Um, white blinding light and I remember I closed my eyes right away because I was like ah, what is that and then I heard a nail come in and say oh that was just me I'm like okay good I'm gonna go back to sleep now so um, that's how I feel like you are seeing flashes of angels um, again we get so overwhelmed and we want to work with all the angels which overwhelms us more Try working with just one for a while. Um, the thing that, uh, uh, another thing that I love about Anel is because she's kind of like the mama, she can call in whichever angel you need. So you may need the angel <laughs> Joe or Sam or Albert and the, they'll br she'll bring those in. And the reason I was laughing with the names is uh, we get so caught in these fancy names of angels and sometimes they don't care. They really don't care about the name. So they'll just give you any old name. Um, one of the gals that has a submission in Angel Whispers book, her, the name of her angel is Pete. And this particular person is a powerhouse with her spiritual walk and her path. So the fact that she has an angel named Pete doesn't negate any of the power that's around her. Um, so don't get caught in the thinking of it. Uh, you definitely have some gifts. That's why you were able to see them with your physical eye. So I really um, invite you to get some more training. Um, learn to meditate. Um, and we've mentioned before that we have an online program and help you make those steps and get a good firm foundation so you can dive right in. Uh, go at lightning speed because that's what the world needs right now is for us to get our stuff together, start doing the work that we're supposed to do. For all of you out there that have felt like I have an important job to do in this life, but I don't know what it is. I know I want to help people, but I don't know how. Then you need to have a chat with me or Dana, and we'll be happy to do that to see where we can um, help you the most, help guide you in that direction so that you can embrace that. Because guess what? The thing you're supposed to do is helping people. And right now the world needs you. So don't be hiding your head under a cover. Get out there, shine your light, help some of these bright ones. Um, find a way to help children. And um, I'm being told that now is more important than any because of the influx of children on this planet that are aligned with the angels that are here to help. And some of these children are hungry. Um, they're not in the best living situations. And they, they need help. They need physical help. And they need spiritual support. So it's not just your immediate family. Um, even down to uh, the sex slavery that's going on with children. Find your niche. Find what you can be active in. I know one gal doesn't have that uh, works with us. Her health is is coming back on track, but in the meantime, she's working very actively behind the scenes to help rescue children. What greater thing can you do? But help one of these bright ones right now, and know that it will make a difference because you're creating a ripple effect of positivity that will flow through this world. And right now, that's what we need. So I love you guys dearly. Um, keep sending me questions. We'll do this on the next video. I'll pick some more questions in the next one. 
and fly high. And when you're ready to put on those wings and learn how to use them, give me a call, send me a PM, and we'll go the next step.